Hello and welcome to Yonkers Arts Podcast. Today we are here with our Senator, Andrea Stewart Cousins. My name is Anaya. And my name is Amira. Do you aspire to be in a higher office? Well, I usually am very happy doing the work that I'm doing. And quite honestly, it's a lot of work. As you must know, I'm not only your senator, but I'm the leader of the Senate. So I have 63 members, and we are the people who actually write the laws for New York State. I work very, very closely with the governor and with my counterpart, the leader of the assembly, Speaker Carl Hasty. So uh, I am really happy to do the work that I do on behalf of the people of New York, and I aspire to do that well. Are there any interesting stories that you would like to tell us that happened on your job? Every day is interesting. <laughs> Why? Because I represent over 300,000 people. And as you know, whether we're talking about climate change and we all know how hot it is, or whether we're talking about a mental health crisis that so many people are, are dealing with, uh, if we are looking at how to make sure that we provide you all with a great educational experience, those are all the kinds of things that I work to do. In fact, even Yonkers Arts, I've been able you know, to, through the state grants, help this type of activity so that our young people understand that there are a lot of options and hopefully we'll be able to continue to choose great options and make the world better. So I, I have a lot of interesting stories, um, but uh, I think the most interesting stories I have to tell are the ones that include you. How do you see the city of Yonkers in the near future? Oh, you know, the city of Yonkers is one of the most amazing places I've ever been to. And I'm happy that this is, this is where I live. And I have seen it change over the years. A lot of people uh, don't realize, but I tell history when I get a chance to. And one of the things that got me involved in politics was the desegregation case that happened here in the city of Yonkers. And it divided the community. And I was concerned, uh, along with um, you know others, uh, the NAACP and so on, that um, the city would never really come back together again once it was told that it had to integrate uh, schools and housing. And over that time, what I've seen is a growing community not only of people who are active in their community, but people who understand that when we work together, we get a lot of things done. And I've seen the, the you know, renovation of a lot of the areas in Yonkers, uh, beautiful waterfront development, uh, and I see Lionsgate and lots of opportunities. So I'm really thinking that Yonkers' future is gonna be full of really bright, people, uh, lots of people, all ages, families, you know, our seniors will be able to retire here, uh, single, uh, uh, you know, young people who are starting their careers. And hopefully if we take care of, again, our environment, if we take care of each other, because Yonkers, we are the third largest city in the state, but we're still around 200,000 people. So that means it's manageable and we could show the country and the world, how we could come up from being a city that was, um, you know, in the news because, you know, people couldn't live together to becoming a city that's in the news that not only are we living together, but we're building together. That's, that's where I see Yonkers in the future. What inspired you to become a senator slash house representative? Well, I was interested in education uh, and I knew that on the state level, that's where we fund education. And when I ran, it had been after a period where people had actually sued the state government because it had been found that the poorer districts were not getting the money that they should be getting. And the 
lawsuit was found to be true, but then in state government, they weren't paying because it was several billion dollars and people who were in the leadership thought it was a little too expensive. For me, I attended public schools. I've taught in public schools. My children went to public schools. Uh, my grandchildren, uh, one of them at least, uh, and you know, two of them now are much older, but every, everybody's gone to public schools. And I really believe in public education because when you may not have as much money as somebody else, if you have an education, you can achieve a lot in life. So let's invest in the future by funding education. So that's that's what made me want to run uh, to be a senator. And just so you know, the first time I ran, I lost by 18 votes in the longest unresolved race in New York State history. They told me in February of the following year that I'd lost. So I um, ran again. And when I ran again, I, I won, and I joined the Senate in 2007. And in um, 2019, my colleagues selected me to be the leader of the Senate. And so I'm the first woman leader in the history of, of New York State. Who inspired you throughout your career? I, again, love history, and I like to evoke the name of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, most people have not heard of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh, you know, she died quite some time ago, I think in 1955. But she was an African American woman. She had a doctorate. She was also uh, one of the first and only black women who actually uh, was the head of a college. She was a college president. And she was also an advisor to President FDR. She's one of, uh, she was the only African-American woman who actually worked on the UN's Human Rights Charter. And she founded a lot of organizations. And again, back in the day, women didn't have the opportunities. African-Americans didn't have the opportunities. So when you had somebody who was influencing the president of the United States in the 1940s, heading up, and she founded a college after she founded a elementary school for, for black girls because they just weren't being educated. And she funded that by selling sweet potato pies. And then it became, again, a university, and then she included boys, and the Bethune-Cookman College still, still exists today. And so she's always inspired me because she had so little and people thought that she couldn't do anything. And she turned out really to be one of the greatest leaders uh, of, of women. She was certainly a, a, a feminist, a, a, as she would call it, a womanist back then, as well as somebody who gave of herself. She, she was a philanthropist and she was just accomplished in, in a dozen ways that people thought she could never do. And she inspires me. Uh, because I think, again, uh, if you put your mind to it and you have the right influences in your life, you can, you can really uh, change the world. It's, it's, it's amazing. What is the toughest and easiest part of your job? So in order to make a law, you have to get every well, not everybody, but you have to get the majority of the people to agree to, to it. And so the toughest part of doing uh, the work that I do is putting laws forward, and my members, and myself, of course, but members put forward different proposals, and we you know, try and make sure it's really going to help people. And um, then you got to get 32 people to agree, and you got to get them to vote for it. 
So that's hard uh, because, you know, you might think blue is great and, uh, you know, a mirror might think pink is great. And then everybody's got to, you know, have that debate and you've got to prove why blue is better than pink and go on. And so getting everybody to agree. But but even more than than that is making sure that when we have these disputes or arguments or disagreements, that it's done in a way that we still respect each other. So the hardest part is, um, but I, maybe I should say it could have been the hardest part, but we've made it a point to really make sure that everybody's heard and everybody's um, respected. And even if we disagree, we're not disagreeable. So, so it's hard to get things passed, uh, but I mean, one of the things that we've done in order to do that is to make sure that we know that we're not serving ourselves, that we're serving the pe people of New York. The easiest thing is, is to, uh, again, work on behalf of um, the people of New York. People might not necessarily agree with everything, but if you genuinely like people, uh, then it's easy to sort of communicate and even if they don't agree with you uh they will still understand why you did what you did so so i enjoy that part of it and i also enjoy fun days at the senate just to to wrap it up we did a first ever sneaker day at the senate and it was really cool all of the senators you know for the most part wore sneakers we took pictures in our sneakers we talked about sneakers on the floor a lot of people were talking about uh what uh, sneakers meant in their lives and and you know for for a and if you ever come you you should come to Albany the chamber is beautiful we have probably one of the the most beautiful capitals in the country and it's it's the senate is called the upper house uh, the assembly is like the house of representatives on the federal level but but in the senate everybody's kind of um, as they say buttoned down and 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 um kind of straight lace. So to us to be hanging out in sneakers and having a day dedicated to sneakers was kind of fun. Thank you for coming to Yonkers Arts and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you so much for having me.